At the end of my last video, I mentioned that I had picked up another Smart Industries candy crane with the intention of making a video about how to fix it. But unfortunately, it didn't really have any problems, so I sold it, and I bought a machine that has a load of problems. Now, a load of problems is a bit of an exaggeration. It does, for the most part, actually work. But there are a few minor issues and one major one, and I'll be addressing all those in this video, as well as some you know, basic maintenance kind of stuff that I like to do. First off, none of the different lights on the machine are working, so I need to see what that's about. There also seems to be an issue with the forward limit switch. <laughs> Lastly, the claw's not getting any power in full strength mode. But first, I need to explain what full strength mode is. One thing that's interesting about this machine is, just like other machines where you can adjust the claw strength with a potentiometer, you can also set a secondary full strength grab to activate once every 10 tries or whatever. And it will also activate that full strength whenever it does the attract demo to make it look like the claw is stronger than it is. However, as you can see, the claw is not closing at the right time during that animation. It's only briefly closing when it reaches the top, and I have a theory as to why that is. Whenever the claw is supposed to close at full strength, I can hear a relay clicking on. Whenever it briefly closes, I can hear that relay click back off. I'm assuming that the relay is supposed to bypass the claw strength potentiometer, and that when the relay turns back off, its resting position is connected to that limited strength again, so the claw briefly closing is just a capacitor draining or a timing discrepancy. As far as the lights are concerned, I can see that it's probably going to have to do with these outlets that they're plugged into. Well, it looks like two of these outlets just came unplugged, so that should be a pretty easy fix. Well, there we go. I know I probably should have used connectors like that, but I didn't have any. And I probably should have also used the right color wire, but I didn't have any. Typically, if I'm replacing a fluorescent light in one of my arcade machines, I'll use a ballast bypass LED tube. I like these because they require minimal reworking and they're easily replaceable. However, in this case, I needed a couple different sizes of them and the prices are just far too high if you buy these individually. So I bought something that I could buy in bulk that would fit all the machines. It's looking pretty bright now, just need to wire in those wires. So it came with these interconnect cables, but that's not even a proper connector. I guess I'm just supposed to jam those wires in there. I'm, I'm going to solder these together and make my own connector. You can see what I did here. I just cut the plug off the end of the LED power cable and I spliced it into the cables that were powering the original fluorescent lamp. This next part ought to be pretty easy. All I'm doing is replacing the switch right here. Ow. 
just spill quarters all over the floor. The next thing I need to do is replace this wire that runs to the claw because as you can see it's gone all sticky and it's really nasty. Well, with all that out of the way, we've still got the pressing matter of the claw not working in full strength mode. So I've got to dig through the circuit board and find out why it's not doing that. This is the pin connector that feeds power to the claw, and I can see here that there's a trace running from the negative leg on the bridge rectifier right to this pin on the connector. So I know this is my ground and that that's always connected. I can trace this other pin to the output of this transistor here. This transistor here is going to be giving me my limited claw power. I can trace this leg back to the positive side of the bridge rectifier and I can trace this leg back to the output of this potentiometer and what that potentiometer is doing is it's telling that transistor to let a certain limited amount of power flow through these two legs here. However, the output of that transistor shares a trace with the output of the relay. This here is the output of that transistor and the trace runs across here to this side of the relay. These two pins are the common or output pins of the relay and uh, normally those are connected to these two pins here. However, the full power is connected to these two pins here. So whenever the relay is activated it moves from these two pins here to these two here. And the power will flow from this pin to this pin over to the output of the transistor and from there to the claw. So when the full claw power is activated power should run from the positive leg of the bridge rectifier to this resistor across it and to the normally disconnected leg of the relay from there to the common leg of the relay from there to the output of the transistor and from there to the claw. I've got continuity to the beginning of the resistor I've got a reading across the resistor I've got continuity from the resistor to the relay, and I've got continuity from the relay to the output of the transistor. So the only thing in this circuit that's not working is the relay. In case you found that confusing, here's a graphic. Whenever the claw is open, there's no power sent either to the potentiometer in the transistor or through the relay. Whenever the claw closes with limited strength, some power is sent to the potentiometer, which tells the transistor to allow a certain amount of power to run from the bridge rectifier to the claw. Whenever the claw closes at full strength, the relay is activated which allows the full force of the bridge rectifier to run straight to the claw. Since I can confirm with my multimeter that there's no interruption between the bridge rectifier and the relay, and since the claw works fine in limited strength mode, the only thing left to not work is the relay, so I'm going to replace it. So now I've set the limited strength to really low so that the claw will just barely slowly close and I'm on 9 plays out of 10 so on this play it should barely close like that but on the next play it should grab with full strength so let's give it a shot and see what it does.
Well, after the relay didn't fix the machine, it was pretty lost as to what the problem might have been. And to make matters worse, the claw stopped working in limited strength mode too. So I had to take a more thorough look at the PCB. So now that I know how the circuit runs, I know that the power is coming from the positive end of the bridge rectifier through this resistor and into the relay. And from the relay, I'm going to use my multimeter so here to see if there's continuity between these outlets. Any I think there is, and there should be sometimes. I found this at a flea market. In, condition. in case you found that confusing, here's a graphic. Whenever the claw is open, there's no power sent either to the potentiometer or the transistor. Or to the Whenever the claw is if you look at this updated diagram, you can see that there's a diode between the positive and negative legs of the bridge rectifier. I had tested this diode in the past, and it worked fine, but after the claw stopped closing in both strength modes, I retested it and found that it had shorted. So, during a limited strength grab, the power was running straight from positive to negative and bypassing all the other components. With that minor distraction out of the way, let's get back to the full strength issue. Following the diagram again, I didn't see anywhere where the circuit was not running the way that it should, so I thought that maybe the voltage was shorting to ground through one of the other components in the circuit. I replaced the chip that drives the triac, I replaced the triac, I replaced the transformer, I replaced the bridge rectifier, I replaced the resistor, I replaced the transistor, I replaced the potentiometer, I replaced almost every component associated with turning the claw on and off, and still, the full strength mode was not working. I then used my multimeter to see what voltages were running where during a claw closure. I found that whenever the claw was supposed to close at full power, the voltage it needed was present before the resistor, but not after it. Immediately, this would tell me that the resistor had failed, and that it had failed open. However, this was a brand new resistor, and it tested fine in and out of circuit. I replaced it anyways, and I still had the same issue. The only other component directly connected to the bridge rectifier is this transistor. Not only had I already replaced this component, but I also tested the board with this component removed entirely, meaning that the only path to ground was through the resistor, through the relay, to the claw, and back to ground. And yet it still did not work. My last solution was to bypass that resistor entirely. This should send the voltage from one side of it to the other, and, if everything else works, that voltage should run through the relay, to the claw, and back to ground. As you can see, it worked. Bypassing that resistor did the trick. But why? Why was the voltage refusing to go through that resistor before? It was a tested and working resistor. I'm not claiming that I know everything about how voltage works and whatnot. This could be some phenomena that most people understand and I just don't know what I'm talking about. And if that's the case, let me know. But at this point, I'm just glad the machine works as it should. It looks very nice and It's raining again. It rained here every day.